CCOD Pedia case by Group 8, Batch 2. We have a case of a 14-year-old female who was diagnosed to have an acute T-cell lymphoblastic leukemia 14 months ago. She failed to complete her initial cycle of chemotherapy and had symptoms of relapse six months ago, including loss of vision. One week prior to admission, the patient noted onset of productive cough with minimal whitish sputum. She attributed this to a dry throat. She also noted the onset of abdominal pain localized to the lower left quadrant below the umbilicus, which he believed to be caused by the strain due to frequent coughing. Condition was tolerated. Three days prior to admission, the patient had a routine checkup with her pediatrician and laboratory workup was done with the following results. Her scheduled therapy was deferred and she was advised admission. On first hospital day, patient was started on allopurinol and D5 0.45 sodium chloride 1 liter at 140 cc per hour and laboratory exams were requested with the following results. On hospital day 2, patient was put on tramadol and she was also started on dexamethasone and current medications were continued. On hospital day 3, patient was started on cytarabine 110 mg with C5W240 ml to run for 24 hours continuous infusion and on the inception 5.5 mg IV every 8 hours. She was also given pyrosemide 20 mg IV PP and a repeat CBC and a whole abdomen ultrasound was done with the following results. At 12.14 p.m., patient had sudden chest pain over the sternum, excessive sweating, and shortness of breath. Her oxygen level was noted at 89% at room air, RR 50 CPM, HR of 159 beats per minute, PP of 70 over 40, and she was given oxygen supplementation at 2 LPM by a nasal cannula. Dexamethasone was shifted to 5 mg IV PP every 12 hours and cetarabin infusion. The patient's SOs were apprised of her condition and an AND form was signed wherein they decided to withdraw endotracheal intubation, artificial ventilation, cardiac compression, and defibrillation in the event of cardiac or respiratory arrest or hemodynamic instability. On hospital day 4, patient had her last rites administered to her by her priest. Her parents opted to stop medications and monitoring, choosing to have the patient slowly deteriorate. Oxygen supplementation by a nasal cannula was increased to 4 LPM, and at around 1 PM, the patient's sleep and heart rate were zero and fixed dilated pupils were noted. A rhythm strip was taken which showed asystole. The patient expired. For the immediate cause of death, pulmonary thromboembolism with duration of less than one day, an antecedent cause of death is bone marrow and sinus relapse with duration of six months, and underlying cause of death of acute T-cell lymphoblastic leukemia with duration of 14 months. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia is the most common malignant disease in children. It accounts for one-fourth of all childhood cancers and 72% of all cases of childhood leukemia. Relapse is the main reason for the treatment failure in childhood acute lymphoblastic leukemia, and infection remains the major cause of mortality in children. Pneumonia occurred in 40.6% of infectious deaths. 